Welcome to the Push Pull Sales and Marketing Podcast. I'm Marcello. And I'm Sherry. And each episode, we provide you with sales and marketing strategies that you can implement immediately into your own business. On this episode, we got to do something a little bit different. Uh, Marcelli, <laughs> Marcelli, Marcello had the opportunity to words. speak with Doug Stewart. Um, Doug has quite the resume recently. He was a TEDx Raleigh. Raleigh. speaker yep. TEDx Raleigh speaker um he is a Dale Carnegie certified instructor and he's the director of training for Mega Group USA um he has a lot that he's juggling but you can tell he's really passionate about what he's doing and he has a lot of great info some practical stuff you know some insight and um really interesting story about where he came from what he's overcome and where he is today He's also pretty funny on Twitter, too. <laughs> but um, Marcello had the opportunity to interview him, like I said, so we'll just dive right in. All right, so today uh, I'm actually going gonna, gonna to be conducting an interview with, uh, with a Mr. Doug Stewart. Uh, we're going to talk about his story. We're going to talk about his process uh, of, 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 of how he found us, talk about Dale Carnegie, and very exciting. Um, a lot of our listeners also uh, also read and they also listen to uh, to a lot of the uh, TED talks. So he recently did one in Raleigh, uh, and that's going to be set up. Uh, or b- by the time we actually release this, we'll actually have a link up to that. So, uh, Doug, if you can give us a little bit of uh, background about yourself. Sure, absolutely. So first of all, thanks for having me on. It's 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 a pleasure to um, to have connected with you guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks, man. And I'm, I'm really enjoying the podcast. So um, <clears throat> a little bit about me. I'm, I'm a North Carolina native, grew up in Raleigh. Um, as as the, the TEDx talk that I gave a couple of weeks ago went, um, I was born into um, a diagnosis of a handful of, of pretty severe learning disabilities mm-hmm. and um, never really graduated from or, or, or passed a grade from the time I was in kindergarten, really, till the time I graduated high school. I was either pushed through or went to summer school or... Um, given a pass because I was an athlete, um, lucky enough to be recruited and and uh, and accepted into Liberty. Liberty really took a chance on me in Lynchburg, Virginia, um, and encountered a academic advisor there that really changed um, changed my life. Um, she really um, was the first teacher to ever get angry at me, not because I procrastinated or like because I didn't do my work or because I didn't show up for class. She, she was one of the first ones with very few exceptions that got angry with me because of the way I thought about myself. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe you said, what was the word you used, you used before? Disrupted. She disrupted. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She absolutely disrupted. Um, and so because of that, it really forced me to think about myself in a new way. And as a result, I started looking at really the, the topic of mentorship much differently Mm-hmm. Um, as a result, I got involved in the Del Carnegie training organization and um, w- because of the attitude and the mind change that she gave me and then the methods and the models that Del Carnegie training gave me, um, I was able to really develop at a, at a pretty rapid rate. Very cool. Very cool. Now, you, you played basketball over at Liberty, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. How tall are you? I'm 6'7". Six, 6'7". Seven. Six, seven. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and the cool thing, you can actually, you can see some of the, uh, you can see some of the pictures. I think it's up on your website, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the name and your website, it's, uh, it's Doug Stewart, 919.com 919 and 919 is the area code over yeah. in Raleigh In Raleigh. Yeah. Very good. Now I'm making a point to actually pronounce that correctly. Um, Sherry, she said rally or something. Yes. Rally, yes. But, rally. You know what? Uh, our city has changed a lot in like the last probably two decades. Um, okay. there aren't very many people that live in Raleigh now that are from Raleigh. Most okay. people are, have migrated from up North. Uh-huh. So to be fair, most people that live in Raleigh still call it rally. They do. Oh yeah, that's funny. That's, that's funny. okay. Okay, rally. No, actually, that's funny. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you real quick. When I think Raleigh, I have a friend Raleigh who wrote a book. He's an MMA uh, fighter now. Actually, oh, cool. He was. I'm not sure. I think he moved to Spain now, but it's called The Cage and Leaving the American Leaving the American Dream. So I, when someone says Raleigh, I think I I, I think of him. Uh, and his nice. R O L L I E. But, um, yeah, so one thing we wanted to talk about, and, and, and we'll talk about it later, we have a, we have a new sponsor, uh, Info Free, uh, and basically what they do uh, is they have a very, very affordable uh, database that can help you find leads and find certain things. So, for example, if you wanted to find 
accountants in a certain zip code or accounts in, in, in a certain state because uh, you unlimited search so you can also do uh, you can also do credit reports and stuff like that if you want this gives you some basic information so Doug uh, stalked us correct a little no. bit yeah no okay yeah. so so you I can so, say that yeah, yeah 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 I like that I like that I think in another podcast then we talked about that some of the best salespeople are are actually professional uh, stalkers so if you could walk me through the process and I think I don't want to say it, but you've probably done this with other people. You, <laughs> You're not of, my first victim. I'm so, not the first victim. Go ahead. So yeah, I, you know what? I, stalking is obviously one way to put it. The way the way I would I would maybe say that a little differently is is I I actively seek out like minded people. I like that. And um, I, that's just a practice that I have. That's not personal or professional. That's more of a principle for me. Mm-hmm. And um, I just sort of ran across. I don't I don't really remember how I I've. I've gotten pretty good at utilizing Twitter search mm-hmm. um, to find that, and I found um, I found the Push Pull Sales podcast via via Twitter. You found the um, podcast I, via Twitter. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yep, that's how I came across you in the in the first place, and just started sort of engaging with with the podcast handle, and then through that sort of um, sort of realized that it was you and Sherry, and then started kind of connecting with the two of you, and then kind of here we are. Very cool. Very cool. And in terms of your favorite social media, um, I believe you said you use Twitter more than anything else, correct? I do. I'm I'm sort of and actually since last time we talked, I've kind of fell in love with Snapchat a little bit. Really? Okay. I have. I have. Um, I, I love Twitter. Twitter's like I'll, I'll always be romantic about Twitter, um, just because there's been so it's it's really the only real social media where you can really talk to anyone at any time. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Facebook, you can't. LinkedIn, you have to be connected. Um, even Snapchat, you have to be connected to some degree. Um, and I just, I just love the fact that you, it's just an open forum. It's really like being at a, at a, at an event at a networking event somewhere. And you can really walk up, tap anyone on the shoulder and say something to them. You can also send them like, like, do you, you send all, you send, is it pronounced, do you pronounce it GIF or JIF? Um, (laughs) I say GIF, but I don't really know if that's right or not, but I, 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 I think the dude, like, I thought I saw a video or something like that, and he was, like, getting an award. He was giving a speech, and then he's like, by the way, it's GIF. Oh. Which I was like, no, 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 it's not. I like to say GIF, too. Whatever. I'm I'm from the country in, in North Carolina, dude. It's like most of the things I say are wrong, so I, I got over <laughs> I got over pronouncing things right a long time ago. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Very good. So you're actually you're 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 doing a couple different things now. Um, and one thing we wanted to we wanted to talk about. Um, let's go ahead and talk. So we know a little bit about a little bit about your background. So you went to college. You had a certain. It was an academic. Was an academic advisor or was it a, a professor or both? She was. She was an advisor. Okay. So yeah. so 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 she was an advisor. And she and, and, and she disrupted you. So what was it? Was it a particular moment? Was it a couple different meetings when you're like, all right, I, I need to make a change? Um, it was it was actually at a time. So I had never really passed a grade, like I said, through high school mm-hmm. and had always relied on this notebook full of learning disorders that I'd been given. Okay. And um, I had to I had to redshirt my freshman year because my because my grades were so poor. Mm-hmm. And after my freshman year, I went into my sophomore year with a one point four GPA. Okay. Um, which isn't good enough to play. And something that was different about Liberty that I hadn't experienced before was they actually expected me to go to class. Ah, and, okay. Yeah, and actually expected me to pass my tests and do my homework, which was kind of a novel idea for me. And, you know, a novel idea for, I guess, I guess some athletes. And so um, they expected me to do that. And I was in this place where I had fallen into a uh, a little bit of depression, and I was really, really frustrated because I didn't think that I could actually do it. I didn't think that I could accomplish what they wanted me to and get the grades in order to play. So I was at this place where um, I was probably going to lose my scholarship. Mm-hmm. And so I got called to her office. Her name was Sarah. Mm-hmm. And I walked into Sarah's office, and she she was um, had a very angry look on her face. And, and it was not like the, like the look of someone who was having a bad day. It was the look of someone who had been like deeply insulted. <laughs> and so like before I could even sit down, like Sarah looked at me and she, she pointed and she was like, you know what your problem is? And at that moment I knew it was me that she was angry at. Yeah. Oh, and I was okay. like, Oh man, here it comes. Right. Yeah. And she was like, your problem, your problem is that you're a victim. And it was interesting that in that moment I felt this like huge sense of relief because I agreed 
like I agreed that like I hadn't asked for the disabilities. I hadn't asked for like the speech impediment, the dyslexia and the mm -hmm. narcolepsy and like all the things that I didn't ask for. Like, of course, I'm a victim. And really what she went on to say um, was really the thing that changed my life. And so the rest of that was she looked at me and she said that, that you know what your problem is? You're a victim. You're a victim of your own thinking. And she told me that I was going to come to her office every day after class until I changed my mind. And so my plan was to do with her what I had done with every other teacher for the most part that had come before her, mm -hmm. which was wait on her to quit. Um, I was I was super good at getting teachers to quit um, for multiple reasons. Well, I went in the next day and she handed me a box of Crazy 8 crayons and a stack of colored construction paper. And um, so, no, I, mean, I mean, seriously, picture this. I'm a six foot seven, 230 pound division one college basketball player. Grown ass. Oh man. Eh, grown yes. ass man. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And she's asking me to color. Right. And so the, here, this was the drill. She would read me my homework and she, and I would color pictures on with crayons and construction paper that reminded me of what she was reading. So like, she didn't care if she knew what it meant. She just wanted me to know what it meant. It okay. could be anything. And I can remember as I would do that, the door in the office would be open. And so my teammates would walk past and like any, they any, must have had a field day. Oh man. Oh. It was the highlight of their college career was seeing me like coloring with like crayons, uh -huh. like the, the just, it was, it was, uh, it was just ugly. And so that would happen. And then other, other staff would walk by and would have nothing to say. Right. Because my level of like, inadequacy made them uncomfortable. Um, but something interesting happened sort of through that process. Okay. Um, over, over a couple of weeks, um, I started to remember and recall things that she had read to me. Mm -hmm. And I became less uncomfortable in the classroom and even felt like I could remember some of the test questions that I was, that I was getting. And that's when I had what I call my alarm clock moment. Okay. Right. So, Every, I think most people can relate to an alarm clock moment because it's that moment that you sort of wake up a little bit and you realize that your alarm clock didn't go off mm -hmm. and you slept in <laughs> and you're going to be really re late for something that's extremely important. And so it's like that deep sense of like panic and then the adrenaline sets in and you start doing everything you can as quickly as you can to try to make up for lost time. Yeah. And so I had that moment, not because I was like late for class or because I had like missed a job interview. I had that moment because there was a moment that I realized that I was extremely late for life, like in general, just life. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I'm 22 years old. I'm a, I'm a, a, a sophomore in college. Wait, wait, and, you're 22 and a sophomore? Yeah. Let's okay. just say there was, there were a few grades that I liked a lot. <laughs> In middle Good school. Stuff, man. So so my, my birthday is actually in December. So I started school late, just okay. in general. So I got kind of a late start. I I, I doubled up in um in seventh grade. Okay. And so I was I was redshirted. I was red I was, and then I redshirted, so I was super you know, I was super old. Well seventh grade, you can consider that an extra red shirt. Your kids are doing that now. Yeah, the yeah, I was the I guess I was a double red shirt. Okay. Because I redshirted again my freshman year of college. Okay. Cool. Um cool. So yeah, I you know, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm, 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 gr I feel grown, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a sixth grade reading comprehension. I've never passed a grade on my own merit. I've got a 1.4 GPA. I'm about to lose my scholarship. And I'm sitting, um, after this process that Sarah had taken me through, I'm sitting in the library, getting ready to click on the view grades button for the end of that semester. And so I knew that my life was going to change one way or the other, because if my grades hadn't improved, I was going to lose my scholarship, go home and get a job. Mm-hmm. If they had improved, I was in a, even maybe more trouble because I had so much to catch up on. And so that 1.4 had changed over the course of that semester to a 3.4. Wow. Like this huge jump. And I, my mind completely shifted in terms of what I was capable of. Now, and so, go ahead. back in the day, there wasn't blazing fast internet. How long was it before you clicked view grades? And then, and then your heart <laughs> sank. Like, how long was that? Like ten seconds? That felt like a year. Oh, uh, it felt like a uh, an eternity. Oh, you know, because you had to watch like the little circle of death. Yeah, like, exactly. Kids, stuff. they don't have to worry about that nowadays. No, 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 no. Oh, absolutely, man. they don't know the struggle. 
<laughs> they don't have the struggle of like 56k internet right right yeah. so but but look it, the the thing was is that you know i realized that i needed a mentor and at that time you know it was 2000 i guess it was like 2006 mm-hmm. and so like twitter and facebook were brand new mm-hmm. the world was changing extremely fast at that point in time absolutely and i felt like the world was changing faster than i could possibly develop and I needed a mentor, and I needed one super fast. Who'd you find? The pro- I didn't. The problem <laughs> was, <laughs> the problem was, I because I needed like I needed like seven dozen mentors. Okay. Right. One mentor, I, I had too much to de- I needed to develop personally. I needed professionally. I needed to develop in terms of education, in terms of just general knowledge, in terms of business. Like there were so many things. Not to mention just getting my normal like adult. Like I needed better than a sixth grade reading comprehension. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> there were so many things. And so I started doing this research trying to figure out how I was going to like accomplish this. And I came across a quote by um, Ralph Waldo Emerson that really, that really shaped the rest of my journey. And Ralph Waldo Emerson once said that, um, he said, he said, every, every man uh, in my walks, every man that I meet is in some way superior. And in that I learned from him. Mm-hmm. And so I realized that maybe my perception of what mentorship should be was maybe a little skewed. And it wasn't so much about like passing the baton, right? Mm -hmm. It was more about maybe everyone can be a mentor to me. If I'm willing to really open up and say, maybe I don't know everything. (laughs) And dude, and you know, you've been, look at you at Rutgers at college, you 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 were that guy. You knew those people. We all thought we knew everything, mm-hmm. right? Walking around campus, yeah, yeah. and so that shift for me as a college kid was such so mind bending. Just to say, you know what? Maybe I don't have this thing figured out. <laughs> I, th- I think the hardest thing for people. I mean, the the, <laughs> and I, I realize this later in life is you you have a bias toward toward yourself and toward toward your own ego so you're going to uh-huh. protect yourself in all interactions anything like that it could be it could be a right. sales interaction you're not going to say oh man that i i screwed up you're you're going right. to say there's something wrong with that person i don't know <clears throat> same thing with with yeah with, with your own personal life oh no it's it's everybody else and in the, the victim mentality you're you're at, you're absolutely right so wanted to transition a little bit so that was when you had the uh, disruption moment. You had the alarm clock moment. So fast forward to today. What are you doing today? So today, um, gosh, a lot of things. Okay. And so I, I just I just did the TEDx Raleigh talk, which was amazing. And and really, I told the long version of that story, which was which was um, and how there were five and a half mentors that sort of popped up into my life as a result of that new definition and that new uh, position and and being willing to sort of be humbled and and to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the TEDx thing has taken up a lot of time here lately. Um, also I'm, I'm very involved. I'm an active, um, instructor for Del Carnegie training. Okay. Um, so I do a, a lot of that. I, I, um, I'm certified in their skills for success courses, which was one of the public courses in Raleigh that I, that I instruct skills um, for success. Uh huh. Okay. And that's really, that's Del Carnegie's like flagship course. That's, that's the, that's the big one that, that really focuses on, um, Self-confidence, people skills, leadership skills, um, attitude, stress. Um, okay. It's 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 one of those all-inclusive um, um, courses that it's like no matter where you are in in your in your journey, uh, taking that course is is edifying. Okay, uh, it's one of those things like I I still get amazed that I get paid for this mm-hmm. uh, because I get so much personally out of going through the course because even though i'm instructing i still get an opportunity to i'm still i'm still participating just at a different level oh and um, uh one of my uh and and he actually the last podcast that we are i'm not sure when we would like to release this or we probably will after the video is up yeah. is, is up for tedx but uh he did one um he has a company called wrestling mindset and in his stuff he actually talked about you learn better the best way to retain something is when you teach someone else yes um so that's and that's probably why that's why you get so much out of the course so you're a dale carnegie instructor mm-hmm. okay yeah anything else uh yep and so also i'm a director of training for a company called mega buying group usa mega so, buying group usa okay yep so so we're a so we're a company that that sort of uh, exists to support independent retailers in the furniture appliance and bedding industry 
And so I got I got involved in that because my grandfather was uh, was the owner of a of a furniture company as, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and so I grew up sort of around that culture and, and have always have always stayed connected to it to some degree. And, uh, and wasn't that how you got into sales and marketing? Like it was yeah, through the, it was through the family business, right? Yeah, at twelve years old, my my grandfather basically gave me an ultimatum. I could either be on the sales floor, or I could be in the warehouse, and the sales floor had um, breeze. Okay. <laughs> they had like the open door with the fan like we we grew up in a in a warehouse so there was no like ac there was no heat and you know the warehouse didn't have a good breeze and the sales floor did and so you know i often wonder what would happen if the warehouse would have had a better breeze than the sales floor my, my life would have maybe been different that is funny that is funny <laughs> well when i was a kid my dad always used to like he would make us go he owns a construction company he'd make us go to work for a company and he and it's I don't know if now if that's the reason, but he would like he loved construction workers because he thought that those were like real hardworking people right. and truck drivers. Yep. And now I'm a sales manager for a logistics company, and all I deal with is truckers and and freight and stuff like that. And I'm like I don't know if, if he wouldn't have said something on those car rides, <laughs> you know. And he would even have like he'd have like the whole like uh, like the CB radio. He knew like all the code, like soup is yep. like fog and stuff like that. Right. So you got into <clears throat> so you got in you got into the furniture business. You got into the whole Dale Carnegie, uh, so you're an actual instructor now. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that. So the actual Dale Carnegie course. Sure. Um, how did you find him? How did you find? Him? I I I love I love Dale Carnegie. I love I love his stuff. Um, I believe. Uh, shoot, who is it? Uh, Warren Buffett. I think the only like the the only thing in his office he doesn't have his diplomas. He doesn't have his honorary degrees. He has like a like a course from Dale Carnegie, like one of the actual certificates. Yes. And he's more proud of that. So how did you end yep. up doing that? Um, completely by accident, okay. to be to be honest with you. I was I was working for a company called Tempur-Pedic, the mattress company, okay. and I had I was a rep for um, for a manager of a furniture store who called me and said, "Hey, um, my company is making me take this stupid eight week course that I eight don't want to take." Yeah, the course oh. is eight. It's an eight week. Uh, so once a week for eight weeks. Okay. So they're making me take this stupid eight week course that I don't want to take. Okay. And so. Um, I don't want to go, but I have to. So if you'll go, we'll pay your way. And I said, done. And so I went. I didn't even know what it was, really. And I went, and it absolutely changed. It changed my life in a really meaningful way and really gave me methods and models to deploy against the the drive that I had. Um, and one of the great things about taking the course is um, if you'd like, you can come back and be a graduate assistant, and there's no charge. And so I sort of got into it for free, and then they were like, you know, you can come back and be a grad assistant. And I'm like, how much is that? And they're like, it's free. I said, when can I come back? And they said, well, a new class starts Monday. So I was literally in that next Monday as a graduate assistant. It took like nine courses straight. Um, the and same just course nine times? Over and over and over. Yeah. Nine times the same course? Nine times. Um, wow. And then I probably took in another four or five, um, okay. but I took nine consecutive courses, um, because I just fallen in love with it, and there was so there was such a depth of, of of wisdom in that class, and and it was all actionable, and it was all meaningful, and it would actually work when I would try, when I would when I would deploy it, and I wanted so badly to to grow and develop, okay. and then after a time, I had, I had developed a relationship with the regional manager in the area for um, for Dale Carnegie training, and he asked me if I'd like an opportunity to become an instructor. Okay. And so then I started a two about a two year process of becoming an instructor. Went to went through core competency, <laughs> went through endorsement process, and um, after after a after a, a long ride, um, became an instructor. Very cool. Now before and we what we do is we have we have a we have a little break in between. Uh, you talked about actionable stuff. I'm going to challenge you, uh, our listeners, and 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 that's probably why you searched for the podcast. You wanted to find good stuff and not just uh, and 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 that's one of the reasons why we actually well one, the whole reason why we started a podcast is with Sherry's idea because I'm like, do people even listen to podcasts anymore? <laughs> and then I was talking about like a sales book I'd read and stuff like that, and I'm like, I read like a 200 page book, and like there was five pages of decent stuff, and the rest was just like just trying to reinforce the actual theory. Yes. So. In terms of all the courses you have, and we're going to have links to all that as well, uh, what would you say if you had to give advice to to, 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 all, to all our listeners here in terms of something from Dale Carnegie or an actual resource or maybe something from your own personal life? What would be your nugget of information? 
Um, considering that most of our most of the audience here is is sales related, they're in sales in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So so actually, right now as we're talking, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, and I'm I just I just I'm in a hotel right now. I just came from a I'm a sales meeting for. A, for I was going to say because like I'm looking well. The, the podcast listeners can't see, but I'm, I'm like, it's dark outside, and I see light coming in this thing. I'm like, where? Well, I'm moving to Raleigh. <laughs> no, and and these drapes are not my drapes. These are okay. Marriott drapes. So okay. Um, <laughs> so anyway, one of the things that I literally said 45 minutes ago is I, there. I have an absolute, based on my personal experience, I have an absolute foolproof way for to make every single customer that you have think that you're smart. Okay. And that's one of the things that we want as salespeople, right? We want people to, to, to fundamentally think that we are smart, capable individuals, right? Absolutely. And if you want to do that, there's only one thing that you have to do. What's that? And that is be genuinely interested in your customer. Like, it's not rocket science, but here's, here's why. From my personal experience, when I meet someone for the first time, that it that is genuinely interested in me. They look me in the eye. They ask me questions about me. They're more interested in talking about me than it, they it are. Hurt, it hurts their me. neck to look you in the eye, though. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, we can sit, right? <laughs> <laughs> but like, they look me in the eye. They ask me questions. They they care more about talking about me than talking about them. You know what I think? I think, gosh, they're pretty smart. Why wouldn't they be? They're interested in me. Right. Good stuff. And that's and that's what our customers feel the same way, because everyone, no matter who you are and no matter how humble you are, everyone's favorite top. Everyone has a vested interest in themselves, not necessarily in a selfish sort of way. But it's like this. When you see a picture of you in a group, like a group picture, who's the first person you look at? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get points for that. Yeah. But. I would also challenge you that you probably glance at yourself first really quickly and then your wife, you're, right? You're, 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 you're trying to, uh, to, uh, disrupt me right now. <laughs> Good stuff. I am trying to disrupt you. Good stuff. It's like so many of the things and, and this goes along with the Dale Carnegie stuff. There's so many things. It's like, if I were to give every single participant that's ever come through my Dale Carnegie class, a Scantron, right? A, t a, a, a test, a bubble test. Do kids still say, do that? I don't know. Probably not. Probably. Nah, I don't, I don't think so. All right. Well, if you're, if you're, if you don't understand what that is, like Google 1985 and you'll know. Um, but most, I think most people, most people get the Scantron, right? I could give them a Scantron of all of the, all of the questions that, that I would, I would want them to be able to answer correctly. Mm -hmm. hundred percent of them would pass the test and, and, and clap out. That's what, I don't know if that's, if, it, if clap, that's the clap out. I'm from, I'm from Jersey. I don't know. Is that a Jersey okay. thing or? I don't know. We used to it, when I was at Liberty, you could like you could like take a test, a, a clep test, and like clep out of a class and get the credits and pay for the. I don't know. Whatever. They wouldn't have to take okay. the course because they already knew, right? But the problem isn't what they know. The problem is how are they deploying what they already know? Okay. We all know. Like one thing that I like to ask big groups, and it's and it's hilarious. Is is I'll say by show of hands. How many of you can think of something you could do right now that would make your life significantly worse? Everybody, right? Everybody, I think of something I can do right now that would make my life worse. <laughs> of course. Well, the truth is we, can, we, also, we also know a half dozen or two dozen things that we could do right now that would make our life better. Mm -hmm. I could stop procrastinating. I could eat better. I could exercise more. I could go to sleep at a better time. I could treat my spouse better. I could spend more quality time with her. Like we all know what those things are. What we don't do is we don't stop and think about the implications of doing or not doing the things that we already know that we should do. So really what our course does is we, we call that to light first, right? The second thing is that we recognize, and this is one thing that makes us different than, than most any other course, is we recognize that the person who sits at the conference table is the same human being that sits at the kitchen table. Same person, mm -hmm. right? And our culture says it's not business, it's personal. But the truth is, if you have an awful day, if you get laid off at work today, uh, when you get home, you're going to have a tough night at home. Absolutely. Right? If you argue with your spouse all morning and you're yelling and screaming, you're going to have a tough day at work. 
<laughs> because as a, as a human being, we can't disconnect who we are. And you, if you can, you can only do it for a certain amount of time and then you absolutely lose your mind, right? Yep. And so we, we recognize that, that people are, are people, right? And they're not like units of measure that can, that can perform this act over here and then go be a different person in a different area of their life. Um, that's, it's not authentic and, it, and it's not true to who we were created to be in the first place. Um, and so that's really kind of the second thing that we that we sort of identify. And then the thing that makes the course beautiful is that it's in a w- eight week format. Some people actually do it in a 12 week. So what we do is we'll say like session one is really primarily about how do you connect with other people mm-hmm. and how do you remember people's names? Two models that we kind of teach. Right. So we'll teach those models and then we'll say, here they are. Go practice them this week. Come back next week. Tell us what your experience was, and then we'll teach you a new model. So it's a gradual building up until session eight. Gotcha. Very so you, cool. it's not like theory, right? You actually get to learn something. Yeah, and then something you, you can to actually deploy. use. Right. And then you understand the implications of doing or not doing that thing you already knew in the first place. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. All right. So we have, uh, again, uh, we wanted to, uh, wanted to thank our, uh, our sponsor, uh, info free we have a uh, we have a special way actually to hook up with them if you send an email to uh, push pull sales at gmail.com we will actually send you over a, a special a, a special referral code and a direct contact over there you can get set up with a free trial uh, like I said it's a service that that, that, I, that I personally use for my business there are some there are some other providers out there that we have spoken about but this is the one I use uh, personally for my own business and uh yeah so uh all right so we have uh so we have doug stewart here uh he is a uh dale carnegie is it certified authorized what is the certified dale carnegie certified license authorized whatever dale carnegie (laughs) certified uh instructor over over in raleigh he is and what is your official title it's called mega buying group usa Mm -hmm. director of training Director of training. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So you're doing a couple different things. So you have you have the Dale Carnegie thing going on. Mm-hmm. You have the Mega Buying Group USA. So how do you balance everything? Um, very very carefully. Um, okay. I mean, I think part of it. Look, it's it's so so Mega Mega is my full time employer, right? Mm-hmm. I am I am an employee of Mega Group USA. And so okay. I give the, they get forty hours in Tulsa now. Yes, that's exactly why I'm in Tulsa now. So they get, without question, they get forty hours of my time. Okay. And so you know, I think people have this like they get really romantic about like the side hustle and like they're like building their dream or doing work that they care about, and and they forget that it's really about doing work that they care about, and it's not always about money, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think a lot of people think that their side hustle has to at some point replace their um, r- real job, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they forget that sometimes it's okay to just do something you love on the side. And that's really how this started for me. This was meaningful work that I really care about. And that's why I started doing it. And that's why it was easy for me to also give Dell Carnegie training 40 hours. <laughs> and you like just um, on the weekends. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I don't always, right. They don't always, I don't always work 80 hours. I don't always work 60. I don't always work. You know, sometimes I don't have that much time for side hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, but, the, but the truth is, is that when you're doing things that are meaningful and you're doing things that you're, that you're in love with, like, look, I would, I would be doing this. And the truth is, is before I was with mega, before I was with Del Carnegie, I was, I was working toward this work for about two years. I, st- I started a blog, um, and I was I was writing, and I was you know doing sales coaching presentations for free for whomever would you know show up and listen. Um, and so I think that the the best thing to remember is uh, the first the first thing is you you can never um, steal from your company and work on company time, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's the most important thing. And the second thing is be okay if it doesn't replace. And, it, and you're not doing it full time ever, right? Because it's, it shouldn't it shouldn't be about that. And if it is, like make it about that. Write a plan and do your thing, and that's fine. 
but know that it's okay for it not to be that as well, right? Mm -hmm. Side hustle should be just that. <laughs> Side hustle, right? Get after it at six, work till midnight, like whatever. You got to do work on the weekends, but you don't forget that family is the most important thing. And happiness is really the effort, right? Like that's like people get into this thing, um, Marcelo, and I know I know that you run into this as well. That people get into this thing where they 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 think the American dream is something that it's not. They think it's you know retiring at forty years old or at twenty five years old, right? Mm -hmm. They think it's living in this huge house or driving a Bentley or like like owning this huge company. But the truth is, the American dream is about being free and being happy and being healthy. <laughs> like absolutely, the, the whole point too. You you can set a goal. And you what you just I'm gonna be miserable until until I get to that goal. You get to that goal, and then you're like, oh, that's it. And then you're miserable until you do something else. Right, right. And the truth is, is you might die before you get that, to that first goal. That yeah, yeah, that as well. <laughs> Especially if you're burning the burning the candle at both ends, right? And you're working eighty to hundred. Like if you're gonna work that much, for gosh sakes, dude, enjoy it. Like like it, oh, yeah. <laughs> love it. And and that's that's the reason that I that I that I am okay with dedicating so much of my um, emotional energy toward the work that I do, and they I, I've been really fortunate and really blessed in that regard that I've been able to find find work find a, find a real a, a real job mm -hmm. right that I that I really find value in and find meaning in, um, and then the Dale Carnegie stuff really does overlap it, and then the TEDx stuff kind of overlaps that. So so I, I recognize that I'm I'm in a unique situation um, but i also made a lot of sacrifices to create this situation and and you're really balanced i mean at, aside from the family you're really balancing three three different things in there. and one thing i i noticed about you and you can't really teach that is you you have you one you 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 have a passion about about what you're doing no matter what it is you you can tell it comes across in your voice so when you were describing all right tell me about Dale carnegie boom you were excited about that and you've you said that a million times. You've been through the same course like fifteen times, <laughs> right. you know. Um, and again, when and, and when we'll talk a little bit about about what you do over at Mega Group, the quote unquote real job. Um, same thing. I've I've heard you talk. I've heard you talk. I heard you talk about that before, and you get really really excited about that. You know, same thing with, with, with same thing with the TED Talk, and then you started your website uh the blog how long ago was that tell us if you talk to us about that process and that's really sherry's realm she is she was or is the uh the uh, mommy blogger so she loves yes. she loves that stuff yes um so i started i started my first blog in 2011 okay and it was called and it was it was it was inspired by a book that i read called rhinoceros success by scott scott alexander um, that I absolutely love. And it's a book that I like, it's so simplistic. I read it to my four year old and that's partially why I loved it. Cause I came across it when I sort of had a, a reading comprehension that, <laughs> that, that, that was the kind of book I needed. Yeah. Um, and it really inspired me. And so I started this blog called sales rhino.com. Like the ch cheesiest, corniest name. It doesn't exist anymore. I was, I was, I was so going to check that like right now. <laughs> Actually, the domain just – it just expired. I mean you could buy it if you want to like bring it back to life. But I, I think it's – I mean I think it's out there and it's available. Sales, SalesRhino.com. Yeah. And so I started that blog and I – it's like how it started for me is it was really just about getting better. At that point in my life, I was working for Tempur-Pedic mm -hmm. and I had to send out week, weekly emails to my dealers. And I literally couldn't put together an email. And my wife had to proof my emails because my grammar and my writing was so awful. Hmm. And so I said, the only way I can get better is to actually publish out to the world. And so I started this blog and I would publish three or four times a week in, an order, in order to get better. Now, I'm not great. I still I, – look, you read my, read my blog and there's, there's going to be a typo at least every post. <laughs> like it's just going to happen. That's just how I roll. And so the people oh, yeah. that read my blog have gotten over it. Um, and if they can't, I can't fix that. So they just kind of have to do. You get deal. like haters. You get just like 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 the stupidest like comments and stuff like that. Like the grammar police. Mm -hmm. I do, and and I appreciate that. I okay. I really do. I mean, because people value different things. And when when someone reads my stuff and cares enough to send me an email that says, "Hey, you misspelled," um, or you used 
it should have been T-O-O, not T-O, right? You mm-hmm. screwed it up. And I say, I've been screwing that up since, you know, 1983. Like, it's not like, I'm still not going to know tomorrow. You can tell me I'm not going to know. But I, I always send them an email back and say, look, I appreciate how much you care. Thank you so much for even reading it, right? And, you know, that stuff's valuable for some people. And look, grammar is valuable. Um, but there's, there's some things that I value over others. And shipping content is more valuable than it being perfect for me. Good, good stuff. So you're bouncing. So you started you started the blog, which by the way, I'm gonna check that. that and I'll, I'll actually put a link. I'll see if it works. There's a, a really cool service. It's called like uh, Wayback Time Machine. Oh, cool. And you can see websites at different periods in time. Oh. You just, yeah. Oh. Oh man, it is it is amazing. So I actually needed to use that because we were changing my company's website. Uh-huh. And uh, we had like a really – and while we were doing it, we had a really, really nice glossary and terms and stuff like that. So I had a new employee start, and I was like, all right, let's just send him to the glossary. And then my IT is like, oh, uh, no, there's a new plug-in or something like that. I was like, oh, man. Where? And I was trying to find the back. I was like, I know. And I went to the way back time machine. Boom, it had the glossary when it actually worked a couple months ago. Oh, wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, oh, you could see it, – it's kind of funny. Like you just see like how websites were like back then, and you're like, oh, my God. And there are some websites now that that, that, that haven't been changed. You're like, whoa, what's yeah. – what is this? Is it, yeah, what's, what's actually going on? Right. All right, so for I, – I have, I, have, I have bad ADD or whatever, and I'm, 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 I'm not a victim. Uh, <laughs> but I, 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 am, I, am self, I am self-aware. I, I do get sidetracked. All right, so for <laughs> the real job, quote-unquote – Mega Mega Buying Group USA. So what what are you doing for them? So you're the director of training, mm-hmm. and your uh, company helps do what? Yeah. So so primarily what we do is we're we're we exist to support independent retailers. Okay. And so we we have about 1,700 retailers across the country, um, and we work based on a subscription model. So they pay us a subscription. Mm-hmm. In exchange for that subscription, we offer them things like um, like. Uh, vendor rebates, financing buy downs, um, um, uh, offers on health care, um, really uh, credit card processing services, also things like training. Um, we do conventions where we do education as well. And so, my real responsibility inside of the group is to um, provide internal and external, external training assets. So, I do things like online training. Mm-hmm. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Florida. We brought together um, about 15 independent retailers and we did a, a leadership retreat and got them together and really facilitated some, some really interesting conversation and, and provided them with some, with some really great content in order to help them drive their business. So what I do with Del Carnegie with individuals, I do the same thing at mega for business, for, for businesses. How right? many so people it, in your company do what you're doing right now? None. I am, I am the one. So, so you are balancing everything. Now, do you also get new clients too? Do you have to do um, that as well? No, not really. Not okay. really. I, I, I guess it, it, it's kind of an expectation of everyone in our company. We're, we're really, uh, we're a pretty flat, um, flat company. And so mm-hmm. we, um, we're pretty lean Okay. and, um, we do that in, in a lot of ways to, to protect our membership and, and not drive up the, not drive up the cost of membership. So, um, we have, we have a dedicated sales force. Um, and I am, I am the training guy. Like okay. it's, I'm, I am it. And that's, that's why I've, I've done, um, I've, I've put a lot of my effort and energy to learning, um, online training. Okay. Very we cool. do a lot of that. Very cool. All right. So just talking a little bit to, a little bit to, uh, Doug Stewart. Uh, one, the reason why, why we have him on too, uh, I, I like his process. He found us on Twitter. He, did everything he complimented us you know he he's, he he knows us and you know we become likable if you're interested in someone else you become likable he sounds like a smart guy because he's interested in us <laughs> using his own using his own stuff against him uh and uh he had he had a whole TEDx talk and and again t- if you could talk to me a little bit a little bit about that process you know uh a little bit about that before before we actually wrap it before we actually wrap this up so how did you get into TEDx and talk again and just wrap up in that so you how did you find TEDx? So, I mean, that uh, I've seen Tony Robbins on TEDx. I've seen this uh, uh, Ty Lopez. Some people hate him. Some people don't like him. I mentioned right. him in different things. He does like a, how he reads a book a day. How yeah. did you find TEDx? How did you get involved in that? Twitter. Twitter. 
Twitter. Yeah, I mean, so look, it's very similar, right? I, I found, um, I saw I saw a tweet through a Twitter search I did about um, TEDx Raleigh, uh, found out who the curator was, connected with the curator, started following him, found some things that were interesting about him and his work, um, found out that there was a, there was a meeting, went to the meeting, um, met, met a bunch of people at the kind of the original meeting and, um, you know, realized that's something I wanted to do. So then I went through the application process and did the video and answered all the questions and made the, made the first cut, then made the second cut, then made the final cut. Three cuts and to get in a TEDx. Three, three cuts, three cuts, and 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 every every TEDx event's a little different. So some aren't as as hardcore. I think ours is ours is probably the our vetting process is probably one of the most hardcore. Okay. Uh, but dude, I mean, it was like it was one of the best experiences I've ever had as a as as a professional. I mean, just getting to be around like a, a ten other just super dynamic people with great stories and great hearts and. You know the the thing that made that the thing that everyone had in common, right? There were people from all kind of backgrounds, all kind of different works. The thing that everyone had in common was heart. They just cared about each other. They just cared about other human beings, and they were willing to do the work. Like that was it. Good, good. Now, how can how can people find you? How can how could how could how can everyone find Doug Stewart from Raleigh or from Raleigh, <laughs> Tulsa? <laughs> Right, everywhere. Everywhere. Um, the best place to find me is on my website, which is okay. DougStewart919.com. And he spells Stewart uh, like, like S-T-E-W-A-R-T, correct? Yeah, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. And that's Doug Stewart 919 is also my um, Snapchat username and Twitter handle. So those I'm most active on those two platforms. It's all it's all, it's, it's all the same. I just read – Sherry, she, she, she's the marketing side. I have a hard time keeping up with that. Uh, I just made like my Twitter and my Instagram and my Snapchat all the same username. Nice. Uh, I had like it was M to the M to the cello. I used to have like M like an up whatever like like right. and I was like oh people aren't good at math they're not gonna figure that one out. <laughs> um, very cool, very cool. Uh, so that pretty much wraps everything up. Uh, again, Doug, uh, definitely thank you for having you on the show. Uh, Wanted to give a uh, shout out to uh, bensound.com. They do our intro and outro music. Uh, you can find all the show notes, all the links are going to be on the website uh, pushpullsales.com. Uh, for our offer, you can email uh, us at pushpullsales at gmail.com. We'll send you a special a special code, and also get you hooked up with with, with one of the top uh, with one of the top reps over there at Info Free uh, Twitter. Uh, I think we yeah, we just started Instagram at pushpullsales. And a lot of times when I say we, it's mostly Sherry. Uh, in, terms, in terms of the marketing side, and 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 that's pretty much every pretty much every 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 good husband. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks again, Doug. Uh, we'll uh, we'll catch you uh, another time. Cool. Thank you guys for all you're doing. Keep putting out great work. Thank you, man.